Hello, welcome to today's session. Today we will be talking about the various models in political geography. So we will be talking about the Mackinder's half length theory, then we will be talking about the rim length theory, containment theory, shutter belt theory, and so on. So let's start with the first theory that we would be talking about today. That's the Mackinder theory. So Mackinder's half length theory. So we'll start with this diagram. The first one talks about the heartland theory. The second diagram is for the rimland theory. So let's start with the Mackinder theory. In this, what he basically said that uh, there is always a struggle between sea power and land power. And it's the land power that ultimately dominates the world. His uh, model was based on Mercator projection. So you have Mercator projection on which the model was based. Since we know in Mercator projection there is uh, distortions, so the northern hemisphere is shown much bigger in reality to what it is. Okay, so what he tried to show was that the land power always dominates. That was his main uh, consideration in this theory. 1904, he devised the pivot area, which is this region, as the main region of the central region, but then in 1919, he said that this region also be belongs to the pivot region. So he added this more region to the uh, original pivot region. In 1904, he gave the book which was known as Geographical Pivot of History. In 1919, when he added this book, he wrote the book Democratic Ideals of Reality. And in 1919, he gave this as the pivot area. Then he talked about the inner crescent and finally the outer crescent. So what he said that those who rules the East Europe rules the heartland or the heart of the world. Then those who rule the heartland command the world island. This was the concept of world island. And finally those who rule the world island command the world. So basically he said was this is the heart of geography, uh, this is the heart of the world and from here all the power originates. So he divided this into three tires. The first was the Arctic drainage or the pivot area, the inner crescent or the marginal crescent and finally the outer crescent or the in insular crescent. Okay. After saying this, he talked about the concept of world island. The world island was covers the 75% of the area or the region of this where two third uh, and two third of this world island has nearly seven eighths of the total population. And finally in 1943, he gave the concept of Midland Basin. Now what is the concept of Midland Basin? Under Midland Basin, he includes the countries of North Atlantic, Eastern USA and finally the Western Europe. And he said that the power runs parallel. But there was a lot of criticism that the McKinnis theory faced was. The first one that this theory is oversimplified. This theory is highly dependent on Mercator projection. There is very uh, high overestimation of sea power and this theory totally ignores the factor of technology. So these were the major criticisms or drawbacks of heartland theory. Later on the rimland theory came into existence. This was given by Spikeman. So Spikeman and his rimland theory uh, explained that you have two regions. You have the inner marginal crescent that is partly uh, oceanic and partly continental that's outside the uh, heartland and he wrote the book which was known as America's Strategy in World Politics. Uh, this was during World War II when he explained this concept and his major, major belief was those who rules the Rimland rules the Eurasia and Eurasia finally controls the destinies of the world. So he said all the power lies in the region of Rimland. Now, these two were the basic theories that came into existence. Now there were a few theories that were uh, extractions of this theory. For example, Cohen's theory. Cohen gave the Shatterbell theory. Now his theory came after Mackinder's theory. When Mackinder died in 1947, Cohen in 1950 gave the Shatterbell theory and tried to modify the heartland concept of the pivot area. So what he mentioned was, as Rimland is to inner crescent, 
So what he said that this inner crescent is equivalent to rim line and the remaining all region lies in the outer crescent. So this inner crescent of the rim line is the shatter band region. And shatter band means as we discussed in the previous session, shatter band is the region where conflicts uh, can come up. So he predicted that this rimland region would be highly prone to conflicts or internal instability and later on his predictions came true as we can see from 1950 to 1980s there was huge diplomacy on the oil and Middle East and that was the rimland region. So his predictions came true in, in the near future. Okay, so this was the Shatterbend theory by Cohen. The next important theory was by Mahan. Mahan gave the C power theory. And what he tried to explain in the C power theory was that the Russian Empire, this whole region in Russia, is formed of vast continental um, region. But the empire is unified due to the oceanic uh, communication around it. So all the continental dealings that are in this region is possible only because of the oceanic communication and around it are the maritime states. So around this are all the maritime states of Europe. The only regions which are disconnected from this mainland are United States, Japan and the Britain. So this was the concept of Mahan that sea power ultimately dominates the whole of the region. Now we will come on to some other theories. The next theory we will be talking about is the containment theory. Containment theory was given by Kenman. Kenman in 1947 explained the concept of containment. So he said that US and its allies will build a containment wall around the core communist country. So to stop the effect of domino, uh, to stop the domino effect. And what is domino effect? We discussed in the last last session. Domino effect is that, for example, this is country A, and there are country B, C, and D surrounding it. So if A turns into communism, its impact will fall onto B, D, and C, and slowly they will also fall prey to communism. So what containment theory said that U.S. and its allies are trying to contain the spread of communism okay so they wanted to draw a kind of containment wall around the communist nation because they did not want soviet union and uh, russia and sorry china to expand and this containment wall would be followed seriously and in any case nato or north atlantic treaty organization will try to uh, stop it in case they try to expand so that was the concept of containment theory. The next theory is the functional approach. This functional approach was given by Hartshun. Richard Hartshun gave this theory where he talked about political area differentiation. So he talked about political area differentiation. And what he really meant in terms of political area differentiation was differentiation in terms of functional organization so there were two basis, basic concepts that he tried to focus. First was differentiation in terms of functional organization. And second was the focus on the spatial consequences. So if you are going to do any political process, what would be the spatial consequences of that political process? Okay. So he focused on these two theories, these two things. And his main concern was to maintain a balance between the centric brittle force, which are pulling things inside and the centrifugal forces which are pushing things outside. So was basically what we tried to show was to maintain a balance between the centripetal and the centrifugal force and to maintain the internal and the external roles. And this can be possible only by tracing the past events. So only by tracing the past or history, what you can do is you can maintain a kind of existence of the roles. The next theory we would be talking about is the unified field theory. This was given by Stephen Jones. It's the unified field theory. 1954, given by Jones, Stephen Jones. In this theory, he talked about progression of links and he talked about there are 
five links that can make a chain of uh, a kind of chain or a progression. The first is the political idea. That idea would lead to decision. There is movement of the decision and the idea from one place to another and people. Then that's creating a political field and finally a political area. So that was the basic essence of Stephen Joe's theory. So he said that all the geopolitical fields act like magnet. Okay. So they are behave like typically like magnetic fields. And what happens is if there is any change in one field, it leaves an impact onto the other field. So for example, if there there is a change in A, that change would Im definitely impact B. So he said that all the geographic, geopolitical fields behave technically like magnetic fields and whenever there is change in one field, it would definitely impact the nearby country or the nearby rela or related geographical field. This was the concept propounded by Jones under the unified field theory. Now we will talk about the German geopolitics. The German concept of geopolitic was given by Hochschulfer. He was the basically called as the father of German geopolitic. So what he said basically was the main cause of Germany's defeat in World War I was due to the lack of geographical knowledge and the geopolitical awareness. That was what Hochschulfer believed. <coughs> so he talked about the branch of uh, German geo strategy, which was known as geopolitic. And under his strategy, he wanted to maintain a kind of equitable distribution of wealth. So there should be equal distribution of wealth and territory. So equitable distribution of wealth and territory was the same. And that should be within the uh, dimension of the uh, territory or uh, rather within the international system. So that was the basic concept of German geo uh, geopolitics. Now we come on to the less known and less heard about air power supremacy theory. Air power supremacy theory given by Servisky. This uh, Servisky was basically a Russian aircrafter. Uh, he was a Russian aircraft designer and he was the founder of Republican Aviation Company. He basically said that being strong in air power is very important. In 1942, he gave a book, Victory Through Air Powers, uh, which was later converted into a movie. And it alerted the allies to uh, on the need of air power. So what he basically said that Traditionally, land and sea power were the dominant powers, dominant powers, but later on what happened was this uh, shift took from land and sea power to the air power. When he was trying to understand the American uh, response in World War I, he said that the American powers are much weaker as compared to the other belligerents uh, in terms of air power. The concept of speed, range, altitude, and armament was very less in US Army as compared to the uh, belligerents. And so he said there should be a kind of strategic bombing ideas that the United States should follow and which should uh, awake. And this basically awoke the need for development of air power uh, in the United States. So his book, The Victory Through Air Power, was one of the best-selling books of that time. And uh, Servisky was also awarded a Medal of Merit by the then president, that was Harry Truman. So these are about the basic theories that we have discussed today. So in summary, we have talked about the McKinder theory, the Spikeman theory, containment theory, Shuttleworth theory. We have discussed the air power supremacy concepts the German geopolitics, the functional approach in geography, uh, in geopolitics. Hope you enjoyed this session. Stay tuned for more sessions in geography. Have a good day ahead.